Greetings, nail people. Nails over coffee. Oh, apparently I didn't fix the light issue with my University of Nails sign. Oh well. Okay, we'll let everybody get joined in. Hello. Hello, this is some rather 80s looking curl I got going on in my hair today. Hi. Oh, from New Zealand. I saw you just sign in. Hello, hello. I know, I love the fact that it's still coffee time over in New Zealand. When you're tuning in, it's just Friday, not Thursday. <laughs> So it's actually not the 25th for you. It's the 26th, so that I think is just like so weird. And today we have the we have the Mickey mug. Yeah, I know that's so weird, huh? We live in such a global community now. So here's my Mickey mug for today. It's like 60 degrees and beautiful here in the Northwest in Washington today. So I was kind of messing with my light because I've got light coming in through the windows. Hello everybody joining in. I have lots of pictures today. Giving it another go today. That must be Mara. Hello, hello, hello. Let's talk some more about nail shape because I'm really annoyed about nail shape. Um, but I want to actually, while everybody's getting joined in, I want to talk about something else that I saved first. So let me find my saved stuff, which is forever ago. Oh, Okay, um, I'm going to post this in the comment section below on Facebook. This is, um, I believe it's an older blog post from Tina Alvarino. Um, yeah, it's from May 10th, 2014. Um, but this is about the 20-factor IRS test for the beauty industry. And um, so it outlines the differences between whether you are a booth runner or whether you are an employee if you're in the United States and um, there is no such thing in the United States according to the IRS as an independent contractor in our industry, um, which is interesting. So I have some friends who work for the Internal Revenue Service. Um, I'm going to reach out to some of them and see if I can clarify a few things. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to post the link to this down below because it's um, a really good blog post. The other thing is Miss Monica shared on my timeline on Facebook some of these, since we're talking about nail shapes before we get off on my stiletto tangent, um, she um, posted this and I'm going to try and save this, yes, I'm going to try and save this to public so I can post it, but I'm not really sure how, so I'll figure it out, I don't know. Um, but this has shapes. Um, and it has them from both sides. So like this, let me get it to blow up, is the Monroe. And look at that bad boy down the side, huh? Wow. Um, it has the arrow. Check out the side profile on that bad boy. Woo-wee. There'd be a heck of a form to do that, huh? The pipe. Some of us have seen that, especially in some of the more couture nail designers. Um, the blade, yowza, yowza. Um, edge, I think we've all seen this. It's got the strong center line and the strong angular shapes. Um, okay, stiletto. See, that is a stiletto. The crap that I show you later that I found on Pinterest, when I looked up stilettos, not stiletto. That is a stiletto. Maybe we should make this like a, like a public service announcement or something for consumers. The stiletto pipe. How crazy is that, right? I could actually probably wear that one. Um, oh, I don't even know how to say this one. Or, Oros Mandala. Yeah, thank Monica. She's the one who did it. She sent me all this. Um, stiletto. This is kind of a cool. It's a stiletto with the sharp center line of an edge. Weird, huh? Getting all these hybrid shapes. Um, and then this is in a different language. So I'm not sure. But look at this whole chart. Interesting, huh? 
And it's got the look down the barrel, which I love. So, um, this is a super, super, super cool thing. And like this um, has for a stiletto and a pipe stiletto, right? Isn't this awesome, Monica? Thank you so much. Look at this diagram it has. And it talks about filing and where the shape should be, the architecture. Now that's architecture. It's even on graph paper. Check that ish out. So, um, okay, here's the Marilyn. You know, um, classic square shape with narrow sidewalls, the Marilyn pinch technique. I bet we're doing, oh, come on, come on, lighting adjust. Oh, damn it. All right, it'll be posted. Um, so yeah, there's some cool pictures in here. So I will figure out a way to post this on Nails Over Coffee. I don't know if I'll just have to post it in the albums or if I'll be able to post it in the comments or I'm not sure, but I'm going to figure it out because that's really cool. So thank you for sharing, Monica. And that totally leads us to the discussion about nail shape. Make sure I didn't miss anything else in here. I save so much stuff that... Um, uh, we'll talk about that one at the end if we have time. Okay, so I saved stuff here in my photos. So what I did is I went to Pinterest and I typed in nail shape stiletto because my big thing is is that I think just as important for us to figure out what the shapes are, I think it's equally important for our clients to know what the shapes are because if they don't know, then they can't ask, right? So doing a little bit of research on our own, this, when you type in stiletto for search, this is what comes up in Pinterest. These are not stilettos, not even these pointy ones with the reverse. Those are not stilettos. I don't know why my camera is so out of focus today, but sorry about that. But these are not stilettos. That is not a stiletto. So I thought it was really fun. Um, on the conversation on my uh, Facebook page, uh, Suki had posted this picture, which I thought was funny. Can you tell the difference between those things? Now, how funny would that shoe look if it had an almond for a heel? How funny would an almond look if it was shaped like a stiletto? I think we need to remember <laughs> that they are very definitely not the same thing. Um, and this was a picture I think that Hillary posted with a coffin, angles, squares, and a ballerina shoe. See how much more ovally and rounded it is? That point shoe? So... These are stilettos. <laughs> These are stilettos. Stilettos. This came off um, Bob Giblet's um, page um, on for Arena Giblet Nails. Uh, I didn't grab... Um, uh, credit for these. So I did not do these. Just as a disclaimer, I... This was posted on Bob Giblet's um, page from Arena Giblet Nails, and I'm sure it was done by one of their artists, but those are stilettos. Now, imagine if you took the ends off of those, you would probably end up with something that looked a lot like what we all agreed were coffins, which is that, right? We all agreed yesterday that these were coffin shape. So if you take this and take the tip off of it so that it's got a flat edge, it would look like that. Correct? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I think. So if you took an almond nail, which I believe more of these... Um, Pinterest nails are and took 
the tip off of them, you would have something that is, I'm sorry, I have to keep flipping through all these pictures, that looked more like that, which is more ballerina, not so much coffin. So, ballerina. And I think that a ballerina that is shaped like a ballerina that's short, to me, is just an almond. A short ballerina is an almond. A ballerina is a long almond with a flat tip. Like a short ballerina with a rounded tip is an almond. Like to me, it's, and in the discussion, it seems like it's all about the angles. And I think that nothing shows that more than those wonderful pictures that Monica sent. Because I think the key is, is that when you look down, when you look down the sidewall of the nail, that's where you see if it comes out straight or whether it curves out. You know what I mean? I think that that creates so much of the difference. So, you know, I think that for the next little while, I need some help from you guys, the regular viewers of my show here. Whenever you see a picture of coffin nails or ballerina nails, that's correct. You need to tag it, send it to me, whatever. And we need to, you need to put in it which shape it is, coffin or ballerina, and hashtag it with coffin versus ballerina nails. That way, when we go and we check that hashtag, we'll have, on Facebook, we'll have a nice little rundown of real coffin and real ballerina nails that we can then pull up and show our clients if there's any confusion. So everybody, I need you to help me out with that. When you're on Facebook and you see a really great example of great coffin nails that have the real sharp edges, they look like a stiletto with the tip cut off, all of that, then, um, then hashtag them for me, um, coffin versus ballerina nails. And um, if you see a really great ballerina nail that just exemplifies ballerina, ballerina, and hashtag it um, with coffin versus ballerina nails. So let's get it so that when we go to Facebook, and if you don't know how to do that, because um, Facebook was late to the hashtag game, when you go onto your Facebook page, you can just click the search bar at the top, and you can type in hashtag coffin versus ballerina nails and it'll bring up people, pages, groups, anything that you can access that's mentioned that hashtag, it'll come up in order. And so if we're all really good about doing that, then we should have a really good album um, to do that with because I'm pretty sure I made up the coffin versus ballerina nails hashtag. I think it did. I didn't see it anywhere else when I hashtagged it. So um, then we'll have a nice, easy thing. Should be cool, right? Uh, yeah. So <sighs> if we can't even as an industry decide on what nail shapes are called, how in the hell are we going to ever come together with everything else? Dude, if we can't even decide nail shapes, really? Really? Like, can't, we can't even agree on nail shapes? <sighs> it's a sad state of affairs. Sad state. So, let's see if, right? So let's see if we can come up with something that will sort of streamline this a little bit. I did take my rant um, about nail shapes and I, might have possibly posted the video from that Nails Over Coffee on Nail Pro Magazine and Nails Magazine's Facebook pages. Possibly. Maybe. So maybe we can draw some attention to this because if we can get our industry publications 
to cover it, then we'll get so much more exposure. If we can get nails and nail pro and scratch to cover it, then I think that, I don't think we need to have a name for every single shape. I mean, let's face it, there's a thousand different ways to do nails and there's a thousand different shapes. But if we can't even agree on what are the basic ones, like I saw a nail chart on Pinterest that it's, okay, we all, we should all know, right? Square, square corners straight out from the sides, right? Oval, which is rounded out from the sides, but it's, it's pretty much straight out from the sides, but it's rounded at the tip, but it's still flat across the top, um, is square oval. So oval all the way is oval, and with a flat on the top is square oval, right? Right? We should all know that. I saw some shape guides on Pinterest that couldn't even get square oval and square oval right. So in today's day and age of social media, and that's what everything's looking, everybody's looking at and all that kind of stuff, we have got to figure out a way. I don't know if it's a concerted effort media blitz or what, but my Facebook um, cover photo right now is um, this. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. I think that if there is enough of us that band together and just decide, no, we are going to make sure, come hell or high water, that customers, not even nail techs, which would be great, but even customers, that we are all using the right terminology. We're all talking about liquid and powder acrylic. We all are talking about the fact that gel is actually acrylic. It's just a ligamer instead of monomer and polymer. Like acid primers and non-acid primers and those kind of things. Like if we can all agree on the basic things that don't have anything to do with our art, because I can't recall an artist ever arguing about whether they, the oil paints they're using are actually oil paints. Or are they maybe watercolors? Oh, or is their canvas rectangular? Or is it a triangle? Like, come on, guys. Like, we need to be able to figure this out. So, <sighs> can you tell I get on one of my little rants? So, on the note of safety and agreeing with things, there was um, a post uh, yesterday in Nail Tech Tips and Advice that was talking about, and basically this was the post um, by Sadie, uh, electric file nail on the natural nail, yes or no? And there was um, talking about, I mean, everything ranging from no and not the best idea to yes, you can use a skiver on the natural nail, which is the little bit that cleans up the true cuticle off the nail plate. Um, to yes, if you're properly trained and it's on low enough speed. And so it was quite the um, interesting, I think we were, we agreed with the, you know, people are dangerous, not the tools. But I think that we need to all be able to agree that nails don't destroy nails, nail text destroy nails, which I posted on that Huffington Post article the other day. I think that that needs to be just the adage of the entire nail world, is that nails don't destroy nails. People doing nails destroy nails, and it's a choice, and it doesn't have to be that way. So we've talked before about damage versus destruction. We need to stop arguing about whether we're prepping the nail with a 180 grit file or a 100 grit file, depending on our product's manufacturer's instructions. Um, you should just be following your product manufacturer's instructions. And if you don't like their instructions, go find another product manufacturer that you do. Um, but I think there's a difference between an expected amount of, you know, when people go in and get their hair lightened they know it's going to damage their hair, but they still do it anyway. Um, but we would hope that if it's properly done, it's not going to fry their hair. I think that's the point, is that we need to expect that with an artificial nail application, there is going to be some degree of effect on the nail plate, but 
It doesn't need to be destroyed. And so if we can all agree on that, then I think we should all be able to agree that whatever tool you use to do that, whether it's a 100 grit file, a 180 grit file, the sanding band on an e-file, uh, a uh, one of those ceramic bits that's meant for use on the natural nail, like whatever you're using that goes in line with your manufacturer's instructions, that as long as you're using it properly, with proper training, proper education, that you're not destroying clients' nails. I think that we need to get that part out there and stop bickering about how we get there. Um... I think, you know, we all can agree. We all know what they look like rings of fire when people come in from the improper use of a uh, drill bit, e-file bit, whatever the hell you want to call it, around the outside edge. I think we all can agree that you don't have to do that. If you sculpt with your brush and you use your product ratio properly or you're sculpting with your brush with gel and you're getting the proper placement around the cuticle area, you don't have to drill around the edge and you need to have your drill laid back so you're not up real high and digging the corner of that bit into the natural nail like again that's technique that's not the drill the drill's not ruining a nail you can create rings of fire with too sharp of a too rough of a file going around in a hand file in too many spots so I think we need to stop beating up on the tools. I think we need to stop beating up on the product. I think we need to stop doing all that. And as an industry, we need to place the blame on the nail tech where it belongs. And when I say in the industry, I mean in the face of consumers, you know, um, letting consumers know that, hey, yo, nails don't destroy nails, nail techs destroy nails. So... Client protection, safety, infection control procedures. Yes. Um, Monica says that, yes. Um, that's the thing. And the problem is, is that because we we can all agree what a doctor is. Preaching that for years, right, Melissa? Um, me too. Um, I know what you meant. Um, we, just like, okay, doctors in different countries can do different things. Um, but we all agree that the practice of medicine is the practice of medicine. So no matter what drug they use to treat said illness, as long as it's effective and safe or moderately safe, then that appears to be okay. Well, I don't understand why as a nail profession in the globe, like we can't get our act together on that. Like... There's an artistic part of what we do that's very subjective, but the safety and sanitation, the not destroying a nail, the making sure that everything that touches a client has never touched another client without being disinfected, um, you know, that disposable things, they're brand new and they go in the trash, that our tables are clean. You would not believe how many salons I walk into that there's like a quarter inch of dust everywhere on the table that's not right in between the tech and the client. That's gross. That's gross. Dust your stuff. Like dust sitting around is still gross, icky dust. Do you have cobwebs and dust hanging from the corners in your house? I hope not. Like not if you're getting ready to perform surgery in your living room, you know what I mean? Like, we've got to just stop the little infighting bickering. And, oh, so on that note, oh, I can't believe I almost forgot. So I posted on my Facebook page, um, and I have a client coming in a few minutes. So if you guys have anything you want to bring up, now's the time to start typing it in because um, I have a client coming in just a few minutes. Um, oh, maybe I saved it in my pictures. So Young Nails is, has either released or is releasing a powder system. It's not a dipping system because you don't dip. It's a pour over system. It's called Slick Pour. 
and it's a powder coat system. And I think before we get all up in arms about powder coat systems, we really need to make sure that we are talking about there's while it is agreed upon that there is actually little risk in the double dipping in the powder jars to the client, there is in fact a risk. And the reason why there's little risk is because there's no water in there. So the risk is really little, but there is a risk. So it seems like the trend is going to more of a pour over type system which I think if you pour over and it touches the skin and then you dump it back in the container, you might as well dip because it's doing the same thing. So unless you throw the rest away, which then what's the point? So anyway, I digress. But it's no different than like a, we've been using powder coating systems for things outside the nail industry for a long time. Um, it's not uncommon at all in the automotive industry to powder coat things. So, um, so Young Nails is slick pour. It is calcium and vitamin E fortified. It is, um, I haven't seen an MSDS on it, so I'm not sure if it's a cyanoacrylate system. Um, I'm assuming it is because it has an activator. Um, and it's got all these different colors of powders, 30 available colors. But I don't know this is um, Young Nails available in all of US except somewhere. And um, this is the March, April issue of something. It's taken as an ad off a page. So I think it comes out in March or maybe April. But the Slick Pour Starter Kit offer is um, Slick Pour Prep, Slick Pour Base, Slick Pour Activator, Slick Pour Top, Slick Pour Brush Restorer, um, two glass damp dishes, six catch-all cups, and one double-sided pouring spoon. Um, and you get a color with this. Um, all for $49.95. It's a $73.95 value. So I will be interested to see how this works. I put a appeal on my Facebook page to Greg to send out a free sample up to me so I can test it on Periscope because it's not something I'm really well practiced in. So we could see what it's like for a total newbie to do it who has nail experience. So new product, old nail tech, see how it works. But so far hasn't gotten any spots. I don't even know if he checks his Facebook tags, but you know, I figured it was worth a shot, right? What's the worst he gonna do, ignore me? Okay, whatever. That doesn't bother me. So I'll be interested to see um, what comes up with that. So, oh, I'm sorry about a breath. Do you know how to get your scope onto your Facebook page? Um, I know how to post it up on the Nails Over Coffee Facebook page, which is actually um, what I do every day. I, and then I share it to my own personal timeline. Um, I've done live video on Facebook, but I don't like it because you can't comment and talk about it while it's going. Um, you can just watch, like you guys all, can, it's not like a chat room thing like this is. Um, at least it, I, it wasn't when I did it in my experience, I could have been wrong, but um, so I've been staying with Periscope even though it's a pain in the ass platform. Um, so I do share it to my personal Facebook page every day, along with probably a dozen other groups that are probably getting sick of seeing my stuff, but whatever. Gotta spread the word, right? Gotta spread the good word? Um, yeah, my client should probably be walking in any minute. And I have to have her in and out in an hour. And she has really long nails, and they're all colored acrylic, and I think I need to change color. Started out white. And I did them really light pink last time. So I'm not sure what color I'm doing on them this time. Or if I'm just going to polish over them with gel polish. Because I'm on a tight time frame. She has somewhere she has to be. So I probably ought not dawdle. Um, yeah, thanks, right? Luckily, I'm pretty fast. But um, the biggest part is going to be picking out what color. 
Yeah, I think I might just do gel polish over the whole thing because it's a really light pink on there right now, but she's an esthetician. And so because she does facials and a lot of waxing, I really like doing her nails in the colored acrylic um, because they, oh, here she is. Hold on. totally ran away from my broadcast. Oh, no, it's not my client, but my client's right behind him. It's the teenager. All right, guys, I gotta go. Miss Alicia's here. We gotta figure out what we're putting on these nails. All right, guys, so I will see you tomorrow at two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, please go to universityofnails.com. Please go to like the Facebook page and share all the crap and all that. And don't forget, hashtag coffin versus ballerina nails. All right, bye.